How many are looking ahead tonight to that glorious city that after this life is over you've got a reservation on the other side for there is no sweeter promise than the promise of a life after eternally with God never to be separated I believe that's our objective tonight that is we have come into the house of the Lord our ambitions are pointed to that glorious city that body that does not die do I have weaknesses tonight? Men and women, we have understood the purpose of the message of the hour in this third and final exodus coming to take us from this terrestrial to the celestial. That is our exodus. Yes, we have come out of denominations, but that's not the real exodus. In a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, when we shall be raptured out of here, we would have reached the purpose of all our laboring. Let's be the name of the Lord. To have witnesses tonight. We like to bow our heads for a word of prayer. As we open the service. And if you are here. And these are your ambitions. To say Lord in this season of communion. This is what I am aiming at. I'm aiming at that final translation hour. Praise be to God. Where I will commune with you without any separation. Praise the Lord. Gracious King of Kings, what a night that thou hast given us to come and assemble in divine presence amidst a world that's filled with tension, a world that is not conducive for your children to live anymore, a world that is sin-infested, having a great traffic of demons in the physical realm, in the religious realm, in every dimension. But yet, Lord, you are calling us to this heaven, this Goshen, a place where we can be true to ourselves and reflect and see that we are not of this world. Even though we are in the world, even though our birth certificates testify of this dimension, but you are giving us a chance to be true to our identity to know that we came from God and one of these good days we shall go back to God and Lord as we come it excites our hearts it encourages our souls it gives us strength to keep pressing on towards the mark of the high calling in Christ it takes the value out of the worldly things that we so much esteem when we are outside there it brings us closer to that which is eternal, that which is divine. And Father, we are thankful. No wonder why David of old said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because in the house of the Lord there is fullness of joy. Joy that goes beyond the humanistic realm. Joy that goes beyond our flesh. But joy that's connected to the inner man. Because Lord, it is in this place we hear direct from thee. 
It is in this place that we receive consolation that lasts for a lifetime. And oh God, as we are here in prayer, we are thankful, Lord, looking ahead to that body when this earthly tabernacle is dissolved. We know there is another body waiting for us, eternal in the heavens. And Lord, we are looking ahead to that. That after all is said and done, we shall be clothed with immortality as time shall pass away and all its elements. Oh Father, I pray, even as we stand your children raising hands, may you steer us into that dimension. May you steer us into that understanding. May you steer us to the agency of the hour that we are living in. We don't want to be identified with those who will be found without oil. Their lamps not trimmed and clear. But Father, take us out of the slumbering. Give us precision, circumspection, that we can walk this path worthy of this vocation, following the footsteps of Elohim. Oh, that is our prayer and our petition, Lord. We came out of religious systems, not to be under another religious system. We know there's a lot of fanaticism out there. But Lord, we are praying for the real thing. We are praying for that original. That Lord, as we have testified of believing your word in this hour, we may live up to it by the enablement of the Holy Ghost that we would have accepted in our souls. Oh, that is our prayer and our petition, Lord. May we be right in the middle of the line. May we be that despised few that shall make it even to that great place. Oh, we really love you and we thank you. May you forgive all sins and trespasses. Take away all that is not of thee tonight. May you establish us that we can hear your word without any distraction. Remove every human element as you always do. Father, we pray that this January as it stands as our Gethsemane, Father, we may really come to that place where we can fight our battles and overcome them in this season. That Lord, as we go forward like Christ, the cross won't be heavy anymore because we'd have done the necessary things that are required of us, O oh God. Like you speak and you say, not my will, but thine will be done. That was the greatest victory to speak against your flesh to speak against your desires, to speak against your feelings. That was the victory that brought us where we at. And we, was, we ask, Lord, that you may give us the same grace that enabled you to stand and overcome, that we can also overcome in our day through the same words, meaning it from our heart, as we put on your perfect every step of the way, communion with thee, and hearing you clearly, oh, grant it. Thank you. And I pray thee, take us through the rest of the proceedings. You know what your children have need of? Why they're raising their hands? I'm sure you, you see what's behind. Oh, I pray that you undertake for them. I just pray that you sustain them. Nobody would leave this place the same way they came in. But according to their expectations, May they go back rejoicing that the Lord is faithful, has met our needs. We love you and we thank you. Praise the Lord. God richly bless you. Shall we temporarily take our seats? Um, trusting everybody is happy to be in the house of the Lord. Praise be to God. And I um, would like to welcome Brother Machewa's sister. Brother Machewa. Woma City Lillian. Woma City Lillian. I would ask her to stand up that we can recognize her. 
Praise the Lord. Let's walk amen. God bless you so much. We are happy to have you in service. And we trust that God is something special for you. Praise the Lord, you may have your seat. Praise the Lord. We need to pray with the Machevas. They lost a sister. Brother Machevas sister. I'm sure that's the reason we are seeing Lillian is alright. So may God praise the Lord. Actually, it's like there are two funerals. Praise the Lord. So, it's the brother as well. So, we need to hold them in prayers. That God may console the family <coughs> in such a time as this. And uh, I think Sister Flora, they'll be having a funeral again. Is it Machero? On Sunday. Yes. Let's also remember them. Um, even though it's the path that everybody has to take. Now our death is always an unwelcome visitor. So we don't take it lightly. But we trust that God was ordained that for all men knows better than our feelings. And sometimes it's easy to speak when you are not involved. That all is well. All things work together for good. But when you are in that position where you have lost your loved one, you would need strength and prayers that you can overcome. So let's do that for them by the grace of God. Praise the Lord. How many are ready for the word? Mm. How many are under expectation? Praise the Lord. I think um, this uh, is one of the most inspired series that we've gone through. And we thank God for the inspiration <clears throat> and also the dedication. Uh, I've been speaking to some brothers and some sisters and um, I was encouraged with the seriousness with which they are taking this communion series. Um, one brother said to me, uh, I've never heard God speak to me like this ever since I received the message. I may not be speaking the right, uh, the exact terminology. But uh, you could see that uh, it's, it's not just going on the back of a duck. And it's very good that you approach God with reverence and sincerity. And many other encouraging comments. I'm getting them from the brethren and those who are watching over live stream. God bless you, those who are watching us live. And then it's, it's encouraging as well. Uh, that uh, those from a distance, even though they are not in our midst, can feel the influence around us. Praise the Lord. And um, 
we look at the challenges that are coming as well. You begin to see that the devil is also noticing it. I'm talking about the accident and many other things happening. Now, it, it also encourages, you know, because it shows that the punches are reaching home. The punches, eh? And then the devil is feeling it. And we thank God for protecting us amidst all of that as well. Praise the Lord. So I think if you reduce the brightness of your camera, that one, the first one, it will help you. Praise the Lord. So we appreciate the Lord so much. And then um, we are trusting that we are going to go further now we were talking on Tuesday by the grace of God on the subject who will go for us uh, confession cleansing and commission now this language can go deeper depending on your level of maturity in what you have received. Sometimes people think maturity is spending time in the message. Say, because I'm 10 years in the message, I'm mature. No, some can still spend 50 years and still remain immature. Maturity is connected to humility. Because maturity it is the level of growth. The growth of the word inside a believer. And the word cannot grow inside of you. If ever you have not submitted to it. If there is self in you. God cannot be seen. That's why John said I must decrease. So that he may increase. So God can only increase. In line with your decreasing proportionately so. Is that right? But if there is still more of yourself and you want more of yourself you, you won't be able to have much of God. The Bible speaks of them having all things in common. The time they were having communion, the early church. Now, having all things in common is because they were common. And what made them common? It is because they had died. And it was the life of Christ in each and every one of them. A personal things. Praise the Lord. It, it was actually God in all of them. Somebody say Amen. Are we together? Praise be to God. So we thank God for all of that. And we pray that more of him will be seen in us as we are looking at the scriptures. Somebody say Amen. Are we together? Praise be to God. So this can go deeper depending on your maturity. Pastor, are you saying that uh, you are going to speak things to a certain level based on our maturity? No, 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 no. 
Ah. I'll preach the same way. But because of your stand and maturity, you, you may all hear the same thing. But you will not hear it the same way. You understand my point. So the part I'm going to be preaching, it is actually deep. Depending on how you are going to hear it. Are we together? Now brother Branham, when he preached the seals, he first preached God hiding himself in simplicity. It was a preparation for that mystery. He knew that if he just went straight into the seals, people were going to miss it. Because people were expecting something very great. Praise the Lord. I think you can help them to sit there so that they can manage. Now, you, you see that in all of this, when God wants to speak something deep, men who always miss the definition of deep. So the preparation is important. I think you remember when he preached about the bridge. Is that right? And that bridge was preparing for the seals. Revelation chapter 1. It was preparing the sin for the church ages. Is that right? And we had revelations 13, 14, 15. Is that right? From 12. And it was preparing as well. The sin for the vials. So you begin to see that there is always you know, a preparation that God has for you to receive something great or deep. Now if you are attentive to the progression of how God has been speaking. You are going to observe that your attitude towards this series of communion is determined by how you received the bridge, the sermons that were preached before communion because they were intended to prepare for this. So it's, it's one great picture that you're supposed to see. Are we together, friends? So as a believer right here, you must be able to make use this technology is not just there for entertainment. Say you just listen to songs. And no, it's the word. Deep. You need to go back and revisit. To say the pastor preached a real divine taste of fellowship. And he preached it is not enough to be a virgin. He preached religion blocking God's way, all these things. You bring them together. You begin to see the picture that God is drawing amongst you. So may God richly bless you. And tonight, I'm going to be taking uh, my scripture in the book of Isaiah, the same chapter, and then I'll add a few more scriptures by the grace of God. So let's come to Isaiah chapter 6. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you this evening for your kindness as we are about to read your word anointed. Assist us that we can see your vision with clarity that at the end we may be beneficiaries. We are dedicating every soul 
the visible and invisible audience that you grant us favor for the night. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, so you know, this is the vision of Isaiah. The Bible says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. A firm declaration of the impossibility of seeing God without something dying. Uzziah had to die. And then Isaiah saw the Lord. Now this is not put in there to cover space. But it's a reality of the end time. You can pray. You can fast. As long as yourself still lives. Forget about seeing God. Somebody say Amen. The principles that govern certain laws that God has given to point that even the closest to him they still have to abide by the same principles. The Bible speaks of Abraham being called out of Ur of the Chaldeans to a land that he did not know. And then when he was called he took Lot with him. And Lot was not part of God's plan. The Bible shows you that God never spoke to Abraham until Lot was separated from him. When Lot went his way, that's when the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came unto Abraham. So it was not going to be broken because he's a friend of God. Abraham, Abraham was blessed based on the principles of God. So even this church in this January this communion to see God to have our eyes opened that it is him to have our eyes of understanding that we can understand the scriptures. It is not going to be an automatic thing. There is the faithfulness of the fivefold ministry and also your responsibility as a bride. Some say, now the Bible then speaks that when he saw the Lord speaks that above it stood seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, then said I, who is me? For I'm done, I'm undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live core in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from, the, from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched my lips, and thine iniquity is taken away. And thy sin purged. Also I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Vaserafe, Bobabo Ima, Gata Duruawe, Venga Muti, Baba, Vena Papa, Tanunanti, Biriziza Utireza, Chipatu, Biriziza Ufuka, Mirenge, Biriziza Ufupangazo. Bobaba chi huerera bari. Muketua, muketua, muketua andi yovua mabutu. Shango lote, lo darazu mkodao. Miteo ya zukuwa. Ya zinginyea, nga maipi akuwa yeneyo. Ndu ya darabuti. Nendari, ya we, diaroba. 
Gauri nendi mutu wa miromu ya tichika. Tobele yofa wa mabutu. Ndo mungu onanga mato wanga. Ambo kupamuwe waba serafe adane. Ofara simbe nga chanda. Oba olijia kale tare nga. Nga rumano. Ananga miromu ya ngangalo ari. Jino lene li simbe lonanga o miromu yao. Murandu ureka iwe. Wotu uwa. Na zibi zao uangwerwa. Ndambo paipi la mune wabote lichiri. Nidorumanyi, mudindawashu, ninyi, nendari, nine, ntume. Now, in this whole account, we see Ribona. the approach to God in the presence of God that Uzziah died. It opened a way for Isaiah that he can see the Lord. But as he was getting to the Lord, he passed through confession. When he confessed, it was not just self-accusation, but it was a recognition of his insufficiency. And it brought forth a cleansing. A broken and a contrite spirit will I not despise. And then after he was cleansed, he had confidence to take up a commission. So you see the sequence. It's not commission. And then look for a cleansing. And then later on you want to confess. Now it starts with confession. And cleansing. And then you are commissioned. Now are we together? Now, while we are standing, let's just take one more scripture. Isaiah 33. Now you look at it alone at home. It's talking about God's judgments against the enemies of the church. And also the promise, I think, for the faithful. But there's a part that I just want to extract from this chapter. Theologically, it can be linked to Hezekiah. I'm talking about the historicity of the account. But as the bride, we, we, we don't see the scriptures like that. So I'm just going to take an extract from the chapter. Is right? Now, I'll read from verse 15. He says, He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. Anea farandira ya zivuya, wau amba auruga, wau hana bindula mavemu, anya zao chanda, anya zao chanda chinguboni, asafuni upa pungo zamarofa, asafuni ubona zuhivi. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions or munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him with waters. His waters shall be sure. Ono yo utopata kataba. Ushabelo awe ndi bako la tomboni. Usu awe utopiwa. Madhi awe angaki. Praise the Lord. And then he says, Ari. This is the part that I want you to catch. And then I want you to catch it right. Praise the Lord. Now, when you speak of munitions, you're talking of strongholds. But now he says, thine eyes Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. 
unakani hayo udobona shango lo atamao somebody say amen mungu mtukare amen thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty they shall behold the land that is far off mato au adobona kosi unakani hayo udobona shango lo atamao now this phrase that we are going to take the land that is far off in hebrew it means the land of far distances the land of far distances is that right now for a subject katero will be still talking about confession cleansing and commission but our subject would be the land of far distances may the lord add blessings to the reading of his word shall we take our seats praise the lord the land of far distances thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty they shall be hold the land that is very far off the land that is very far off it's the land of far distances the land of far distances now under this communion we are looking at the importance of getting the heart and desire of god and amidst all of this the bride must find her place in what God is doing in our season. And the awake awareness that God is introducing it is bringing out or taking away the mysteriousness of the message of the hour and then it's bringing everything to clear perspective as the common man would hear jesus gladly also the same in our day he's speaking even clearer not in parables he's speaking in not in parables but clearly now you see the journey that Isaiah took from confession cleansing and commission it led him to the land of far distances and now this land of far distances it is a land beyond the humanistic realm it's, it's beyond Rome which is seemingly the center of worship it's beyond earthly church headquarters church headquarters places that people confide in for religious purposes some have mountains they go to and they believe when they are upon that mountain they will hear God others they have centers that they gather yearly thinking they will see God and trusting that God is going to be heard from those places but this land of far distances is not a land that you see by natural eyes it is the same land that abraham was longing to see 
a city with foundations whose builder and maker is God himself. It is in that place that man can have the truest vision of him or herself about himself. Because the vision you carry about yourself today it is influenced by your background and your surroundings. You find some feel better because of the family they are coming from. The language they speak. Some feel better because of their makeup their physical makeup. Now, it gives you a vision of yourself. And it makes you have an esteem. The way you see yourself. At times, you may feel I'm better than every brother. Because I passed. I, I, I succeeded in my education. I'm better than my sisters because I'm more beautiful than they are. Now, many things, you see, they give you a vision of yourself. You see, I worked for a very good company and uh, my people are the royal class. So it gives you a, a vision of yourself. And mostly, if not all of the people on earth, without the message of Malachi 4, or we have not understood the message of Malachi 4, they walk in line with the vision that they carry from their surroundings. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. The prophet told you about Isaiah before he came to this point of confession. He, he was a good boy in everything. And he was you know, loved by the king. And he got all he wanted from the king. And now that was a religious vision. Like the young rich ruler. What do I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus Christ said you must follow the commandments. The young man said I've done that from my youth. Jesus descended and he saw the young man was telling the truth. He was following the Oba, commandments Oba from his youth. Is that right? But he came down and said, but now, sell everything you have. Give, give to the poor. Carry your cross and follow me. Now that's where the problem began. He was not able to drink from the same cup. Is that right? Are you able to drink from the same cup? To commune with him. Drinking from the same cup. It means you are fellowshipping. It means you are of the same nature. You are of the same kind. You are within the same class. So when God is saying, are you able to drink from this cup? Are you able to be perfect as I am perfect? Are you able to give your all as I gave my all? Are you willing to die as I willfully died of this flesh? And then when you are able, you can say, I can drink from that cup. But if you carry reservations, it means, it means you are not able to drink from the same cup. Now, I want you to 
observe that the vision that Isaiah had it was changed the time that Uzziah died because he was able to see the Lord and the vision of your life will never change until you meet with God if you don't meet with God this church will have doctors lawyers teachers nurses it will have professional people not believers people who define themselves by their earthly status you will never be common somebody say amen but I think you know what I'm talking about when somebody says I studied this I earn this much my family stays in the most expensive suburb my children are rich somebody say amen you always carry the vision of yourself. Somebody say amen. Now but there comes a time where you meet with God. Now your vision will transform. Isaiah, the man that was good, religious, blameless, listen to his language. I am a man of unclean lips. What can make a man speak that language? He was confronted with the truest vision of himself. That is nothing on his own. Without God, he's nobody. His efforts cannot achieve anything without the touch of God. Now, friends, this is what God wants to bring us to. God is not looking for a work done. He wants the work done through him by him so that all the glory may go back to him. So, it is possible that Isaiah may not have produced different works after he saw the Lord from the works he produced before he met with the Lord. The works could have been the same. He was a religious man. But the works that he produced before he met with God they were counted vain because they were connected to his effort and power. But the same works after the man met with God somebody say amen then they were valid in the presence of God now it's important friends that before any man tries to be strict with you be strict to yourself somebody say amen you must be strict to yourself in the Old Testament, I'm sure you know how they used to do that when a child commits adultery, the first to cast the stone was the parent of the child. You get the point. And everybody else would then cast stones. You, you understand that? It was not like people say you're an adulterer. You, you broke the law. Your people were the first one to bring that judgment and everybody would follow. So before anybody cast a stone against your behavior be the first one to cast a stone against yourself to say this nature is not acceptable. There is pride. There is ingratitude. There is Failure to recognize authority in the word of God. And when you see this thing, be the first one to cast the stone. And then we follow. 
to help you kill the enemy. Somebody say amen. So Isaiah, yes, he did not say we are. I am a person of uncleanness. He interceded for himself. You cannot confess truthfully before God until you receive a true vision of yourself. Any confession before you get that vision, it is flatteries. You're flattering God. You are deceiving him. But God cannot be deceived. You can cry tears. But any confession without a recognition of your true vision, it is flatteries before God. Yes, your confession can satisfy me as a pastor. Your confession can satisfy your sister. It can satisfy your brother. Do you understand that? But until you come to this place that Isaiah came to, your confession is not received of God. It is a religious confession. Somebody say amen. Praise be to God. And in this season, we need to come to reality. Somebody say amen. We need to come to reality. You know, I thank God that this series are coming at a time where I was involved in a deadly accident and almost died if God did not intervene. Because I feel it brought me also to another atmosphere that I was not in. In part four or five of communion. I think when I came to part six or seven, I'm not sure which part. After the accident, I, I was now feeling that I'm preaching communion. You, you get the point. Your laxity sometimes is because of your blindness. You can't see that death can be close to you. You get the point. You're still st you know, standing on your health. I'm healthy. You're standing on your age. I'm still young. You're standing on your ambition. I still have to graduate. You're standing on your plan. I have to get married. So you feel life is still in your hands. But if God pulls the curtain down, and then you see that death can be a step away. Your concept will change. Your understanding will be transformed. Somebody say amen. Praise be to God. Now this kind of atmosphere, I can't push it into a man. It has to be revealed to you. The seriousness and reverence it takes to receive the heart of God. It has to be a personal experience of Isaiah. He has to, he has to enter into that presence. Somebody say Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I'm praying that this January, oh brother, we may step into that place where we can get the proper version of ourselves. Oh, pray. God. Satan doesn't like this language. Amen. I've heard people say, you know, praise God. You know, it's just my nature. My nature is like this. Praise God. Now, I'm trying to poke Satan right in the eye. You hear somebody saying it's, it's my nature. I easily get angry. It's, it's my nature. I get irritated by things. You know, it's, it's, it's just my nature. I, 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 I do things this way. Now, now let me show you what you are saying when you speak like that. You, you are actually saying it's my demon. Somebody say amen. And I'm married to it. And I can divorce. You know when you come to God your personality 
Your personality must be dissolved. There are certain things that you can tolerate when you have not met with God. But when you meet with God, there are certain things that must never be tolerated. Even you as parents, don't groom demons in your children and say that's how my child is and you start to support that and cultivate around that a, a demon is a demon and it must be confronted that it's a demon your child you have a problem in the future because you are the one cultivating around a so called weakness and because you have sown the wind going to rip the whirlwind. Somebody say amen. With God, there are things that are not acceptable. It, we can't have you and God at the same time. It's either you are dead or God is dead in you. Or God is alive or you are dead. I'm talking about communion with a God that looks like you. A God that is of your nature. That's the communion we are talking about. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now Isaiah he started attacking all the things that he used to keep. His status. He killed it. His way of doing things. He killed it. The definition that people had put upon him. He killed it. The feelings that he had about himself. He killed it. And after that, God says you are a trusted man. The questions that God can ask only amongst the people he trusts. He cannot ask such a question amongst the people he doesn't whom shall I send? It means there is somebody that he is trusting that he can take up the challenge and not disappoint. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I want to prove to you that this language who will go for us it was spoken in the land of far distance. This was not a language spoken in time. Praise be to God. According to the historians Isaiah chapter 6 yes, took place around 758 BC. You are 758 BC. But I want to say this experience hey, was not in 758 BC. You are 758 BC. This was an experience hey, you in the land Pashan. of far distance. How did he get there? Through confession. Through cleansing. That's where he had the commission. Somebody say amen. If your commission is with the pastor, it means it's 2020. And I tell you, brother, you will not finish that commission. In 2020, they must be a people that must go to the land of far distance beyond the curtain of time. Isaiah. Yes, He got the truest version of himself. Like Job. Sayob. God said, Get up your loins. Stand as a man. You want to talk to me? You are asking me questions, Job. Stand as a man. Where were you? When we laid the foundations of the world. Where were you, Job? When the sun 
sons and daughters of God shouted for joy. No, God was speaking a language with a man that he trusted. Somebody say amen. No, God was showing job that our language must go beyond the dimension of time. You mustn't be logged in this fourth dimension. Light, time, matter, and science. Go beyond into another realm. And their brother, that's where Job said, I know my Redeemer lives. That was not written anywhere. That statement made the scripture that we sing about, that we read about, it was connected to an experience that he had in the land of far distances. Says I know my redeemer live that. Do you know? Do you know? You don't just read about it and say you know. Allow me to take off my jacket. Praise the Lord. Job had hey, to go somewhere to speak like that. Where have you gone to speak the way you speak? What have you seen to dress the way you dress? The language, the songs you sing, where have you seen them? Have you gone somewhere to preach the language you're preaching? Oh, it's a tradition. When you say, I know my Redeemer liveth, it's different from an adulterer and an adulteress singing the same song. I know my Redeemer liveth. No, brother. Job knew what he was talking about. God spoke to him. God took him somewhere. On oh, this year, brother, we are not just going to sing. We are not just going to preach. There is a place that God is expecting you to come to. The land of far distances. Oh brother, that land, it brings the truest version of yourself. That land dissolves the things of this dimension. That land introduces you to reality. Praise God. You know, that land takes away all earthly securities. You know, many times you work with security. You don't really believe God. You look at your surroundings and if you feel secure, you start testifying God is God. But if ever you are not clear with your surroundings, you, you don't praise God. You are weeping, you are complaining, and you are challenging God. You see, that's not faith. That's hypocrisy. See a man, two men. One both of them don't have food. And this one doesn't have any relative in the country. And this one has got relatives. And the relatives are rich. And this one doesn't know nobody. And then in their time of hunger, they speak the same language. Oh God, we don't have anything. But we trust you, God. This one who doesn't have any relative, he knows if God doesn't come down, he will die. But this one, when he's saying, God, I trust you, help me, he knows if really he's about to die, you will call the aunt. And the aunt will send money for Mugayo. But they speak the same language. But the depth is different. This one has got a reservation. This one has earthly security. This one has places that he can lean on and places that can hold him when he's about to fall. But the other one, his trust is upon the Lord. If the Lord doesn't show up, he's dead. Oh, brother, that's the 
condition that God wants to bring the church to. Where your security is God and God alone. Then you reach the land of far distance. Other than that, you are accompanying other people to the rapture because you won't make it. Your reward is here. Your security is here. Your plans are here. But there comes a time where all is shut up and all you see is God and God alone. Then brother, we are going somewhere. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Outside that, we are lying to one another. In a religious system. I read a message that was sent by it's even a denominational person. But it touched me. <laughs> it's a person I studied with. So he was just showing his sentiments. These feelings. He says, you see, in this world that we are living in, he was showing how some place is judged. And then he was saying, the reason why it's judged, it is because God, people have denied God. And then he explained that in the religious circles, it's, 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 it's either you go to an occult, a place where the Asangomas claiming to be prophets. A cult. That when you are looking for God, you end up in such a place. And if you don't go to such a place, the next place you find is cold, dead, and formal people. You get the point. And he was showing the need for the real thing. You get the point. And now when I looked at that, Abraham speaks about those two extremes. The people who are having the mechanics and those who have the dynamics. But I begin to realize and I want you to see it clearly that nine out of ten people are Nine out of ten of the people, especially in the message, you settle around a cold, dead, formal religion. And the deadness of your religion is easily seen by your lack of understanding of why you are doing what you are doing. You know, right now as we, we are right here, do you want me to challenge you? Right here where we are, if we remove faces, faces, we remove faces, and then we say no one is here. The pastor is not there. Your wife is not here. Your husband is not here. Your brother is not here. We are not here for that. You understand that? There are better people that want your tithe than me. Go to the denomination, those prophets. They need your money more than me. You get the point? Find joy there. You, you get what I'm saying? So you are misdirected yourself. And others, they are here because of their wives, their husbands. And for me to be made, I must remain here. <laughs> because this brother, won't, this sister, this brother won't accept, this sister will, not, will say no. But if we remove that sister, the brother can go back. If we remove that sister, the brother, the sister can go back. If we remove marriage, you say there is no more marriage. <laughs> <in the laughs> message. Brother. No more marriage. I will remain with few people. You get the point? If we remove your husband, your wife, out of the picture, you get the point? Some of you, you are just here even because of pride. Because you don't want people to think you have backslid. Not because you are here for the message. You are afraid that if I go back, people will say I have backslid. Now I'm showing you reality, brother. These are the things that's holding many people because they don't have the reality the truest version of themselves oh brother but when it comes you feel it that your anchor is not earthly your security 
guarantee is not earthly. Nothing in this world will ever separate you from God. Because you know you encounter upon a reality you saw. Yes, sir. There is no fear of anything. No fear of anything. Whether I'm fired or not, you are not afraid because you know your security is in the land of fatness. Somebody say, Amen. You're not afraid of being hated by your people because you know your love is coming from a land of far distance. Oh, brother, if you mature to understand this language, we are going somewhere. This goes beyond the clapping of hands. This goes beyond the singing of the songs. This goes beyond the shouting of the saints. It's a reality that God is giving. Praise God. The secret that people must see Judge yourself so that you won't say they are judging me. Judge yourself. And then when anybody judges you, you won't feel like you're being judged because you are done judging yourself. That's why the bride will not be judged because she's judged right here on earth. So there's no more judgment for her there. And if you judge yourself as a brother, if you look at yourself in the mirror of the word, oh brother, I'm telling you, you reach that grace into that land of far distances. Now I want you to hear what Brother Branham says. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Are we together, friends? Amen. Amen. One or two, hear his voice, brother. One or two, if I feel And when you get desperate about this thing, Amen. And when you get desperate about this thing, something will take place. You are not desperate enough. Oh, well, I joined church. That settles it. But you have to be desperate about it. You have to really need God. Paragraph 102. Paragraph 102. My same book. Now, look at this language, beloved. The prophet is talking about desperation. Now, a recognition of a need, a true need. A sincere recognition of a true need is what can drive a man to this kind of desperation. I'm not talking about a desperation that is outward. Can, can I bring that back? I'm not talking about a desperation that is outward. It is saying, and when you get desperate about this thing, now, we're not talking about outward desperation. Where you are praying as a group. People start to clap. Oh, glory. Someone, Someone cries there. And they start to also pray. Hey, Father, Father, Father. 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 And then you are starting to get into the mood. That ain't desperation. It's not from within. You're controlled by the outside. When people start to make noise with the instruments. And then you feel like you are now desperate. You heard somebody cry. Now you feel like God is here. Oh, brother. That's not the desperation. I'm talking about desperation that can come in the dead of night. When you are alone, no one talking to you, but you're looking in your heart. And you come out desperate. Somebody say, Amen. Oh, praise God. I think you know what I'm talking about. Other people, they change gears because others are clapping hands. Some say, Amen because others are in the spirit. But they themselves, they are dry within. Feel like I'm dry. The prophet is saying, 
when you get desperate about this thing, something will take place. You are not desperate enough. And then he says, well, oh, well, I joined church, that settles it. I preach, that settles it. I sing, that settles it. No, I'm, I'm just reading, just stay where you are, brother. I, I join church, that settles it. I, I serve God, in, you know, I, it's all about what you're doing. But he said, but you have to be desperate about it. You have to really need God. You have to need something. It is, that recognition must be there now. Are you getting it? You know, that deer that panted after the water brooks. It's not just panting for water because it's thirsty. No, it's bruised, brother. It's, it's hurt. It's bleeding. Life is coming out of it. So it's not looking for water as a as a as a as a as a want. But it's a need. You, you get the point. Because it knows if it can't get that water, it will die. Blood is coming out. The water has to make the blood clot. So without that water, the dear northern, it has to die. If it can't get that water. Now so you must come to that place where you feel that way. That if I don't get God, I'll die. I'll die. If I don't get God, I'll die. But the problem, you're not desperate enough. Because you have some other things that take the place of God. What are those? Religion. It blocks this. I don't, you don't need to cry for God too much. Come this other way. You don't need to. Ah, it's too much. Praise the Lord. It's Satan that does that. There's a book they call The Pilgrim Progress. There's a land they call The Land of Morality. When Christian was walking, Christian, the name, he was going to that land of far distances. And then on his way, he made the deceiver. Satan, Satan and he took him out of the path to uh, that land into a land of morality and I like the language that was spoken in that book it says where you are going is too far but you can get exactly the same in the land of morality you climb up that mountain there is a place called civility civil things yes and then you know it's talking about them things. Now you begin to realize those are the very things that blocks people from reaching to their destiny. You speak about denomination that other people they see money before they get to God. And then they no longer have the desire of God because the prophets and pastors tell them they are rich. So when they are with money they don't have the desire to search any longer. Because they reach a certain place. But in the message, there is also a thing that people are handed before they reach to God. Religion, dresses, creeds and dogmas. You get the point? The person is seeking for life, but they have stopped along the way. Now they feel like they are a sister because they just put on a dress. Their heart was not transformed. She never received the Holy Ghost, but she's given a dress, a natural hair, and then she feels I'm a believer. She's no longer searching for God. She's no longer praying unto God. And another brother comes and says, I want to marry you. She says, oh, so I'm a Christian. Because the pastor says you marry a person with the Holy Ghost. So I've got the Holy Ghost. No more need for God. That's the dead of that person. The death of that person. And many die like that. 
when we are on the other side, you see, you see what I'm talking about. Because because you see the passage of people where they were cut short to reach the presence of God. Because they will be looking at an area of you. Eh? So, oh, that sister. That's how, oh, but she came right. Oh, she put on a dress. Then they, ah, she felt comfortable. The, the first time she was not comfortable, she was wearing a mini skirt. But when she wore all like them, she became better. Then she changed her hairstyle, she became more better. And the brother said, I love you. Ah, she was now comfortable. And then that's how she died. She never sought for God. She had many children and she died on that level. She never knew God better than she ever did before she was proposed. And Satan will be rejoicing. Don't worry. You young man, preach. I'll catch you. What you are testing, you never test it again. I'll give you something that will hold you. And you will never see anything beyond. Are you getting what I'm saying? These are realities that, that we are faced with. Praise God. And people are dying spiritually because of those things. It's the devil that cuts your journey short. Amen. Amen. If a man comes to you, sister, <laughs> when you don't have the Holy Ghost. You must say, get thee behind Satan. I'm still looking for God. Satan, get thee behind me. I'm, I'm still wet. Can't you see the water of baptism on me? You are a lustful brother. Leave me alone. I need to know my God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Sure. That's right. Because remember, it's the brother that proposes. It's impossible for a sister to love a brother. No. A woman loves because she's loved first. She has no love. She responds to love. It's only a prostitute that loves first. You understand that? Sure, brother. We don't love. We love him because he first loved us. And we love him with the love he has loved us with. Are, are you getting that? We, we didn't choose him. He chose us. You understand that? Huh? I'm talking about the bride. Eh? Praise God. She, she is not the one that seeks for God. No, God seeks for her. And God find her. You, you, you understand that? Huh? So the natural thing is, if you're a young girl, you're looking for God, sister. Don't be perverted from that pathway until you get the Holy Ghost. Tear upon your knees. Reject anything that comes your way. Call it the devil if it's cutting your journey short to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Say, I'll see you later, brother. Or never. Because already I can discern you have no Holy Ghost yourself. Because if you had the Holy Ghost, you are supposed to know. <laughs> Even if you didn't know my pastor's wife, you're going to propose my pastor's wife. With the Holy Ghost. You're coming with. Somebody say Amen. We know. We're singing. I'm looking ahead. Are you? Are you looking ahead to that glorious city? You see these things, some people, you just sing. <laughs> no, revelation. Are you, do you know what you're saying there? I'm looking ahead. What are you looking ahead? Are you looking ahead? Are you looking ahead? Are you looking ahead? If we want to be honest here, some of you must sing it. I'm looking ahead to get a job next year. That's what you're looking ahead for. I'm looking ahead to be proposed by a brother. I'm looking ahead to buy a new car. That's what you're looking ahead for. Not that city. Are you praying for that city? Are you fasting for that city? Are you crying for that city? You know what I'm talking about. You know what you're looking ahead for. But here you sing, I'm looking at that glorious city. Do you even know about it? May God give us grace to understand. I need to see that land of far distance. 
How many feel the same? It's beyond time. It's beyond mortality. It's beyond religion. It's true communion. Fellowship with God. Where he wants you to be. Now, listen to what Brother Branham says. Now, you know, the desire of Christ. I think you know what it was. John 17. That where I am. He, 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 it was fellowship. He wanted fellowship. Where I am, you may be also. No, not only that. I, I think I read that quote when I was preaching about the real test of divine fellowship. That what was the request? Maybe let's let's read it. I, I've got two quotes that I'll read for you. Maybe three, and then we close. Praise the Lord. How many love the Lord? How, how many are seeing what I'm talking about here? Brother Branham says, Jesus only asked for one thing. Jesus only asked for one thing. In his prayer to the Father. You know what it was. One thing. After all of his sacrifice that he did here on earth. The life lived. The path that he walked. He asked for one thing. And that where I am they may be also. He asked for our fellowship. That's the only thing he asked the father in his prayer. Your companionship forever. If you want, you read it this in, in John 17, the 24th. Then how much should we desire him? Now listen. If you really are born of the spirit of God, that means everything to you. It ain't some book of rules. You don't live by any law and so forth. You live by the grace of God, the spirit of God. Amen. That's what he asked for. These things we are talking about. In his prayer, with all the things he had done, it means he did it for that. That's why he said, with desire, I have desire. So how much more should we desire him? Are you catching it? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Listen to what the prophet says. In another book, brother. Let us remember this as we journey to our home. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, maybe you, 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 you keep that quote, brother. I'll read it last. It's a true sign that's overlooked. But let's, let's come to this. You have to really need God. That's caught in hear his voice. Jesus said, yes, Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. But as long as you are satisfied with the things of the world, how can God ever speak to you? You say, God never spoke to me. It's somebody complaining. God never spoke to me. Brown says, why? Why? He says, he wants to. But you are too filled up with the things of the world. That's what's the matter with us today. We put all of our time on the things of the world and the pleasures of the world and give no time to God. Babam says it's true. Your complaining has never spoken to me. Does he even have the space to do it? Look at your mind how busy it is. Look at your plans how busy they are. Look at your intentions how selfish they are. And your complaining has never spoken. 
to me. He wants to. But there is no one available that he can talk to. Oh God, I want to talk to you. God, I want to talk. Not that way, brother. It has to be desperation. It has to be a recognition of your insufficiency. It has to be a truest version of yourself that tears you to that request. Now we find out that Isaiah got desperate and he screamed out and confessed this thing. You see confession now. Confession now. Praise God and confess the sins of the people. You see the point? If you, now watch this. If you cannot confess the sins of your family, of the church, and of the people out in the world, it means the confession of your sin is not a sincere confession. Can I bring that back again? If you search around your prayer, when did you last confess the sins of the church? of your people the sins of the world and you say but I, I, I ask for my forgiveness no that's not asking for forgiveness your asking is not sincere because if it was sincere this is how the sequence goes you ask for your forgiveness the next you go to the people but if you have no strength to come to ask for the people's forgiveness, it means your confession is the wrong source. It's not the right dimension you are getting the influence from. They that cry and sigh for the abomination of the land are the people that went to the land of far distance. Somebody say amen. Do you see what I'm talking about? That strength must continue. Like this man. He confessed that far. Oh, you are praying to fight your mother. Hey, they are persecuting me. Nobody understands me. It's hard. You're not even saying forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they're doing. You see your concept. You're still far from God. You are cursing those who curse you. You don't bless those who curse you. You don't do good to those who despise you. So which land are you coming from? He confessed. Confession. And when he got through confessing, he had a noise above him. And when he looked up, there was the cherubim flying back and forth through the building, wings over their faces, wings over their feet, flying with wings crying, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. You see what's happening, friends? It leads him to the presence of God for a cleansing. You, you, you see the point? You, you, you don't just confess and stop without reaching cleansing. Without meeting that presence that changes you. He says something was taking place. Isaiah got desperate. God come on the job. And Isaiah screamed out by clean lips. For a voice that just spoke. It changed him. Somebody say amen. The voice changed him. You, you, you get the point. The voice changed him. Now listen to what Brabham says, my last quote. He says, Let us remember this as we journey to our home. It was the end of the service. He says, Don't you never let this message die from your hearts. Now listen to this carefully. Don't you never let this message, communion, die from your hearts. Whatever you do, don't you do it. You meditate on this day and night and pray day and night for God to rise his witness now. We are ready for I believe soon time shall be no more. Is that right? Praise the Lord. And he says, when will it be? He's asking Brabham, how and when will it be? Next quote, brother. When will it be? 
Brother Branham, he says, I don't know. Maybe today. It may be tomorrow. If it isn't today, I'll be looking for it tomorrow. It may be this year. Next year. Ten years. Maybe 30 years. I don't know when it will be. But I say from now on, you be prepared every minute. And don't take just something ordinarily. <laughs> Don't do that. Excuse me. Don't do that. Don't you rest day or night until you have talked to God. Keep yourself from fanaticism. Don't get worked up in emotion. Don't do that. That's what brings so much radical stuff. Extreme stuff. And makes people afraid of it. It makes such radical stuff. And makes people afraid of it. Because of radical fanaticism. Don't you accept that? Not at all. You stay right there till you talk to God. After all, it's your soul. And you are the one that's going to spend eternity out yonder. And you'll be sure that you just don't shake hands and say a creed or accept something by faith. Don't you do that. You talk to God. Let God talk to you. And watch what happens to you. Watch your desire. Watch your desire. And what happens? Then you know whether you talked to God or not. Now you see the difference. Then you know whether you talked to God or not. Then you know whether May the Lord bless you. I will rest here. My subject for Sunday. Watch your desires. And what happens? This is where we are starting. Watch your desires. And what happens? Then you will know whether you talked to God or not. May the Lord bless you as the musicians come. The land of far distances. Confession. Cleansing. And commission. How many love the Lord? Praise the Lord. How many love the Lord? Praise be to God. I wish you all the best in all these things. You know, I, I feel like a man that, that has gotten another chance you know, from God. And I, I wouldn't want to flatter any man or woman or somebody to feel that they are alright when they are not. You see, I, I feel God allowed you for a purpose that this accident come just now. I was talking to Sister Chirizi. We were together in the accident. So she was saying, Pastor, you know, from that time, my, my life is different because I began to see <laughs> that everything is vain. Because if I had just gone that time, you get the point. You see how vain life is. You see the point. Because you have, you have neared death. <laughs> but if you have never come to that, you still value certain things. And I agree to that statement. And I pray by God's grace. What, 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 I mean, this is a good opportunity, brother. It's a good chance to serve God again with this kind of understanding. Standing. But I will see to it as well that I will not die as a hypocrite. You get the point. I won't shun to declare the full counsel of God. I'm not going to be hypocritical about nothing. I have much to lose if I'm a hypocrite. You get the point. But if I'm honest with God and man, then I know I'm walking right. You, you understand that? So you deserve the truth. You deserve the truth from your pastor. You deserve the truth from the word of God. And it has to change you. That presence must change 
change you. You see, you begin to see now the reason why you have not been changing all this time. It is because you have never come to this presence. But if you are confronted with this presence, with this truth, with this light, in this land of far distance, a brother, you, you, you have to change. You must change. And if you can't, then you just say, well, maybe my type is Judas. Because he's the only man that came so close to God and never got a change in his life. So there's nothing that we can do about that. But if it's Zacchaeus, he has to change. If it's the prostitute, she has to change. If it's, if, if, if it's Lazarus, he has to rise. If it's Samuel, he must be changed. If it's Saul of Tarsus, he must be transformed. If it's Jacob, he must be changed. There has to be a change when you reach to this presence. How many love the Lord? Let's rise to our feet. I believe the this land of far distances we will look into it. We are going to see David there. You are going to see yourself there. Your expectation to change dimensions will now be connected to what you have really witnessed. You get the point. Now, remember Nebuchadnezzar when he got back his royal robes and his throne it was not a new ground. It was a familiar ground. He was a king before. But he lost it. But he was restored back to that. So there will come a time where this dimension that we are looking to come to it will not be a new ground for you. Because the same God that will make you cross the curtain of time in the afterlife is going to make you also cross the curtain of time and you see before birth the same company the same people that you had before time is the same company you are going to be with after time. So that clarity, that understanding is what God is trying to bring to this church. This is no more kindergarten, brother. God is saying, you must rise up to the understanding of the scriptures into true communion. There is a land of far distances. Confess be cleansed and get commissioned. Which direction? Back to eternity. Beyond the curtain of time. Beyond the humanistic realm. And you will stand the test of time with our heads bowed. You could be here. You're saying, pray with me, Pastor. I need the Holy Ghost. Not because I just want the Holy Ghost. But I need the Holy Ghost. Because I understand what it is. Problem says you can't receive him if you don't know him. That's why he preached what is the Holy Ghost. Before he came to how do you receive the Holy Ghost. Because if you don't know what it is you come and cry to God and the devil will give you his demon. Because you don't know what the Holy Ghost is, you get a substitute. But when you know, that's why he's teaching. When you understand, then you will not be deceived. If that's your desire, just raise your hand where you are. I believe he's right in the building to assist us tonight. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks tonight and we appreciate you. We know you are God 
and your word will not pass away, neither will it return back to you void. And this language that you're speaking of communion, it's talking about a land of far distances, Lord. Above the clucking of the chicks, right in the milky white leg, where it's unlimited what you can do with the man. Lord, that's our desire. Isaiah got the truest version of himself when he stepped into that presence. We also want the truest version of ourselves. Even this moment in time. That we may not walk where, with hope nail shoes where angels fear to tread. But with caution and divine circumspection we want to redeem the time help us to be true truthful like the prophet says we, we must live like it's the last minute pray with agency and Lord we believe that's your expectation for each and every one of us as we see the things surrounding us you steer us to places where we can start to get a certain inspiration now I begin to thank you even for the things you have made me to go through the accident. I thank you for it. Because I'm sure you made it to work for good. And you're trying to bring me to a certain condition based on these things that I'm preaching. A certain level of sincerity that probably I could not have gotten to had it not been for that. But you knew what could drive me to this understanding. What could drive me to this consecration, to this desperation? It is this. And we appreciate it in our midst. And I pray that the church may not take this lightly. Seeing where the word is coming from. It's coming from trials. It's coming from danger. We don't want just to look at it as a casual thing. And just ignore it. But to realize that you are preparing it, Lord. Not only with words and theology but with the experiences we are facing in life, like Paul speak, that he had to pass through so many places, tribulations and trials. But through it, oh Lord, we learn to trust you. We learn to believe your word. We learn to depend upon your truth. And as I commit this congregation into your hands, may there be a place for this word in their souls. May they not receive the deception of the wicked one, but may they be established upon the realities of your word. God, bring us to that realm, that land, where we can have true confession, because there's power in true confession, where we can be cleansed. There's power in true cleansing, not cleansing ourselves by works, but a cleansing that reaches our souls. There's power in true commission, not a commission we get by from our abilities that we are able to do certain things and we deem it as a commission. But we want to go beyond that, that we can be commissioned from your presence, not from our skill and ability. That is our prayer, Lord. Grant it upon these people. Look at all the hands that are raised. Attend to everyone. Do not leave anyone to go the same way they come in. Bring us to more consecration back in our homes as we wake up to pray in the early morning of the hour father let us be influenced by this you said let not this word depart from us let this message not depart from our hearts we must meditate upon it we must make sure we are hearing from God we must not just try to accept it by faith we must be sure he has spoken to us that's what you are speaking to us Lord and we want to receive it like that our sisters I pray as I dedicate and commit all the insurance in Jesus name Bless us as we go home. Give us protection and fortification that we be under your consideration. We ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Praise the Lord as we give a hand of praise. God bless you, saints. We've come to the end of our service. We're going to meet again on Sunday. By God's grace. Hold fast to that which you have had. And don't let the devil steal it away. I trust 
are going higher. The land of far distances. Till we meet again. We want to sing a song. I love him. I love him. Because he first loved me. I, I love you, I love you, because he first loved you. Ah. Uh -huh. 